Hello, my name is Colin McNaughton. I'm a technical marketing manager for the Ansible Automation platform here at Red Hat. And today I wanted to talk about some guidelines for creating custom event source plugins for event-driven Ansible. Now, event sources within event-driven Ansible allow us to consume different events from different sources, right? Pretty simple. So some of the built-in event source plugins we have today would be Kafka. So I can pull messages from a specific Kafka topic and then, re and then react to the data within those messages. Um, another one would be Webhook. I can stand up an endpoint and listen to... Um, payloads being posted to that endpoint and then react to the message payload that's being posted to that endpoint. So very cool stuff. But what if you have some internal application today that is generating some events and you want to pull events out of that application, you might need to rely on a custom source plugin. Or what if you are a Red Hat partner looking to integrate event-driven Ansible into your solution? You might also need to create a custom event source plugin. So today I'm going to be talking about six guidelines for creating your custom event source plugins for event driven Ansible. Now to demonstrate some of these guidelines, I've actually gone ahead and created my own custom event source plugin for event driven Ansible. And you can see that's probably why I have ServiceNow up on my left side of the screen here. I have created a new source plugin that will allow me to watch a specific table within ServiceNow and then react to new entries being added to that table. So this could be something like watching for new incidents being created or problems or change requests. Or in my case, today I'm going to be demonstrating new configuration items on a specific table being added to ServiceNow. So you have, you can see on my left, I have a group of, of Linux servers within this table and I'm gonna add a new one as an example and we're going to react to the event data uh, based on that addition, additional record within that table. Okay, for guideline number one, the source plugin must contain a specific entry point. So let's take a look at my example code here for my example source plugin here. This is my entry point. And this represents the, the sort of the entry point into my Python code here from Ansible Rulebook. So Ansible Rulebook is expecting a routine within this Python code called main, and it has to accept two arguments. One of those arguments is Q, and the other is just the generic arguments that we're passing into this routine or this function uh, that, uh, that are needed to, to actually make the query against that ServiceNow table, things like that. So we have to pass in uh, you know, the URL of the instance, the username, password to connect to that instance, and so on. So these arguments must be accepted by this main routine, this main function within our Python script here. Um, it's also using asynchronous IO or the asynchronous paradigm and things. So we'll, we'll kind of talk about that a little bit later. But the, this is the entry point that needs to be within every source plugin so that Ansible rulebook can run the code and pass the queue back to the rules engine. This has to be contained within every single source plugin in event-driven Ansible. Okay, and now for the second guideline. Each source must have nested keys which match arguments expected by the main function. Now this is um, most easily sort of uh, demonstrated here by looking at the arguments accepted by my Python script and look at the arguments within the source configuration of my rule book that is utilizing that source plugin. So on the left hand side you see my Python code here with all of these uh, arguments that we need to pass into that main function. And also when we're using this source plugin, you can see it over here on the right. Now we're using this new records source plugin, which matches the Python, uh, the name of my Python file, newrecords.py. And then we also have matching arguments here that we're, we are passing into that source plugin. For instance, we're passing in the table value of CMDB CI Linux server, which represents all of my Linux servers here on the left in the ServiceNow window. So this is how we can customize that source plugin. All right, so this brings us to our third guideline. Source plugins should be documented with intended purpose, expected arguments, 
and a rulebook example. Now, even as a, a subpar Python developer like myself, this seems pretty straightforward. So these, this is my comment at the top of my Python script here. I include the name of the script, um, you know, a quick blurb about its intended purpose, as this is just a source plugin example. Um, then it has a description of what this source plugin can be expected to do, along with all of its arguments that it accepts, um, including some of the sort of default or optional arguments. And then finally, I have a, an example of, of how to use this source plugin within a rule book, which is super handy. So um, assuming that this has been packaged into a collection, and this is indeed a fully qualified collection name here, um, I can just copy and paste this directly into a rule book and run this example. So documentation, very important for everything, very important for event-driven Ansible custom source plugins as well, so that everybody knows how to use your material. Okay, now for the fourth guideline, event source plugins should be distributed within collections. Now, I don't really have a great way of demonstrating this with my code today, except for in documentation here. So if you're paying attention, this example, example documentation in the rulebook example here shows a fully qualified collection name. This is the namespace. This is the name of the collection. And this is the name of the source plugin within that collection. Now, Ansible content collections represent the extensibility of Ansible, so by including event source plugins within a collection, it just makes sense. Okay, for our fifth guide on here, Python routines should be written as non-blocking or asynchronous. Now, this is super new to me. I'm not a very strong Python developer by any means, but I was able to kind of figure this out. One of the real world examples I kind of used while I was, uh, you know, to, to try to wrap my head around this concept while I was getting used to it was um, the concept of, you know, waiting for a table at a popular restaurant. I have a group of 10 people waiting for a very large table, but that shouldn't hold up the couples on Valentine's evening uh, waiting for just a two person table, right? So maybe the, the, the couple waiting for a table for two gets to go ahead of me because they're waiting for a very small table while I am waiting for a very large table. I should not block their entrance to getting their table for dinner on Valentine's evening. That's kind of what asynchronous and non-blocking means within Python. It means that we can await our result and not block the execution of any other Python routines that might be running. Now this kind of comes into play when you have multiple sources within a rule book. One source should not block the execution of another source plugin. That would lead to you know, slowdowns in execution or receiving our events from another source plugin. It would make event-driven Ansible run just a little bit slower, noticeably slower, when you are really waiting on the immediate execution or reaction to some event coming from that source. So you can see within code, I'm importing the async IO library, um, also importing the AIO HTTP, because this is what I'm using to make API calls against the service now API. So you can see things like uh, async as I'm setting up the client se uh, session async while I am awaiting the response for from uh, you know a, an API call. You can see it's also awaiting it's, it's it's awaiting the response from that API call, and then we're also going to put that record onto the queue, and it's awaiting that action as well. And coming back to the queue, this is how the event the uh, the rules engine is going to receive this event data from my source plugin. So something like this await queue put record is very important for just about every source plugin. Okay, and finally, source plugins should include a way to test the plugin outside of event-driven Ansible. And that's exactly what the last part of my custom source plugin here for ServiceNow does. Now, this is only called when testing the plugin directly using Python without Ansible rulebook. And so you can see it's kind of pulling in the exact same the exact same arguments or parameters that we're you know passing into the source configuration within a rule book, um, we are pulling these these parameters from environment variables that I've already specified within a shell that I'm running here today, and then it just runs that same um, you know main routine uh, right here. Um, and it passes those arguments into this in the into that function. So we can go ahead and test this. Now this is really handy while you're you're um, 
uh, while you're testing your own source plugin to make sure that it works before creating a rule book and a custom action to, to run in response to that, that event. So I'll go ahead and just run my Python code here. There it is. So you can see it's already picked up the environment variable for my table there, and it's waiting for events to happen. So let's demonstrate a new event coming into that table. So a new record coming out of that table. So I'll just create a new new host here called Podman Host. Uh, let's say 50, 554. Yeah, why not? Um, go down, hit submit. Now we see, should see our Python react to this new, there it is. So this is all the event data generated just from that record of adding in a new host to that specific table. And this is how we can, again, test our Python code before including it into an event-driven Ansible rulebook. Okay, now let's put this all together. Um, let's actually execute the rulebook against this specific custom source plugin that I've created. So here's the command that I'm going to be running. It's running the Ansible rulebook CLI. I'm passing in the uh, the path to the rulebook I've created. It runs on an inventory. This inventory file just represents localhost because this is just an API call from my um, Ansible rulebook host against the ServiceNow API. This dash S flag is very, very useful in creating custom source plugins because it specifies the path to the source plugin itself. So uh, right now I don't have this, uh, I don't really have a fully qualified collection name because I haven't packaged my source plugin into a collection yet. So I'm just manually passing the path to where Ansible Rulebook can find this specific uh, custom source plugin. And it just happens to be in the same directory that my rulebook is running from. That's why it's just a simple dot for the you know the current uh, working directory for Ansible rulebook that I'm you know that I'm running the command from um, I'm also passing in environment variables, so I don't want to expose things like the host, uh, the host name or the username or password within the rulebook. So I'm just passing in environment variables, which are mapped to the arguments within my source configuration. So once I run that, it should just sit here and wait for a new event. So let's make something happen. We'll create a new Podman host. And this will be Podman host 600. Submit that and we should see, there it is. So uh, this specific rule book ran a playbook that just prints out some record information on that one. So you can see the description is Podman host 600. And this is the, the unique sys ID for that record within ServiceNow. So there you have it, six guidelines for creating your own custom source plugins for event-driven Ansible. Thank you very much.